This video is intended to give you a general understanding of how to perform certain test procedures related to the steering system using a power steering system analyzer. The use of this device is required when completing many of the diagnostic tests found in our Chart Your Way Diagnostic Service Manual. This video is based on TRW components. However, the operating principles of the power steering system analyzer can be applied to all commercial power steering systems. We will demonstrate how to complete certain test procedures to help you locate the root cause of any hydraulic steering related complaint. You will be shown how to properly install this device to get measured results for system flows and pressures, poppet trip pressure, and internal leakage. The TRW Power Steering System Analyzer Guide will serve as a helpful reference and provide areas to record your results. This video, like the service manuals, is intended to be used as a reference by mechanics who have been trained to repair and service steering systems used on commercial vehicles. Prior to making a repair, refer to the appropriate service manual for additional information. Service-related information may be found on our website at www.trucksteering.com. Do not attempt to diagnose hydraulic steering-related problems without using a power steering system analyzer. You will not be able to determine the correct information needed to analyze and diagnose the steering system. Take all necessary precautions when working with hot hydraulic fluid to ensure both your safety and the safety of others around you while performing these tests. If you are not sure how to perform a procedure, consult your authorized TRW technical representative prior to starting the test. Installing the Power Steering System Analyzer Some Chart Your Way diagnostic test procedures require a power steering system analyzer, which is a combination flow meter, pressure gauge, and load valve all in one. The system analyzer lets you measure flow and pressure and apply a load to the pump through the steering system's hydraulic lines. Depending on the model of gauge being used, you may see an arrow showing the direction of the oil flow. This will assist you in making sure the flow meter is properly installed in the system. A load valve located near the gauge is used to either restrict or open the flow of oil to the system. The gauge has a scale to read the flow of oil in gallons per minute. System pressure is measured in pounds per square inch. The power steering system analyzer is installed between the power steering pump and the steering gear. Connect the valve end of the power steering system analyzer to the steering gear's pressure inlet port and the other end to the pump's pressure port. A typical installation will look something like this. Power Steering Pump Test. This section will instruct you on how to measure pump flow and system pressure. Be sure to follow the lines to make sure that they are hooked up correctly before attempting to perform any tests. For your safety, do not allow system pressure to exceed 3,000 PSI and do not keep the load valve closed for longer than 5 seconds at a time. This will prevent excessive heat buildup. Now, verify the engine's idle speed per the OEM specifications. Install the power steering system analyzer in the pressure line with the load valve fully open. Recheck and adjust the fluid level if required. Install a temperature gauge in the reservoir and begin the test with the fluid temperature between 125 and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Start the engine and let idle. Measure and record the flow and pressure readings. With the engine idling, adjust the load valve to show 1000 PSI on the gauge. Measure and record the flow and pressure readings. Now with the load valve fully open, increase the engine speed to 1500 RPM. Measure and record the flow pressure readings. With the engine speed at 1500 RPM, adjust the load valve to show 1000 PSI on the gauge. Measure and record the flow and pressure readings. Determine the recommended flow range and maximum allowable system pressure for the steering system being used by referring to your OEM service manual for your application. Compare the minimum and maximum flows and the relief pressures you just measured to gear and pump specifications as shown in your service manuals. If the minimum measured pump flow is less than the minimum recommended flow for the steering gear used, the pump may not be putting out enough flow for an adequate steering speed. If the maximum system pressure is lower than that specified for the pump, 
it may not be developing enough pressure to steer the vehicle. If either condition exists, the pump may need to be repaired or replaced. Pump Flow Control Response Test This section will instruct you on how to determine proper pump flow control response. Be sure to follow the flow lines to make sure that they are hooked up correctly before attempting to perform any tests. For your safety, do not allow system pressure to exceed 3,000 PSI and do not keep the load valve closed for longer than 5 seconds at a time. This will prevent excessive heat buildup. System temperature must not exceed 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 150 degrees Fahrenheit above the surrounding temperature at any time during the test. If it does, stop the test. Damage to hoses, seals, and other components may result if operated at extreme temperatures. Install the power steering system analyzer in the pressure line with the load valve fully open. Recheck and adjust the fluid level if required. Install a temperature gauge in the reservoir and begin the test with the fluid temperature between 125 and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Start the engine and let idle. With the engine idling, record the flow rate. Fully close the load valve until the flow drops to zero. Quickly open the load valve and observe the flow meter. The flow rate must instantly return to the reading you have already recorded. Repeat this process two more times and record your results. With the load valve open, run the engine to 1500 RPM and record the flow rate. Close the load valve fully until the flow drops to zero. Quickly open the load valve and observe the flow meter. The flow rate must instantly return to the reading you recorded. Repeat this process two more times at 1500 RPM and record your results. If the flow rate does not return immediately to the initial recorded value, the pump is malfunctioning which can result in a momentary loss of power assist. Poppet Trip Pressure Test This section will instruct you on how to verify poppet trip pressure. Be sure to follow the lines to make sure that they are hooked up correctly before attempting to perform any tests. Install the power steering system analyzer in the pressure line with the load valve fully open. Recheck and adjust the fluid level if required. Install a temperature gauge in the reservoir and begin the test with the fluid temperature between 125 and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Start the engine and increase the engine speed to 1500 RPM. Steer the vehicle into a full right turn. Then record the poppet trip pressure shown on the pressure gauge. Now, steer the vehicle into a full left turn and again record the poppet trip pressure shown on the pressure gauge. Each recorded value should be at least 200 to 400 PSI below the pump relief value recorded in the power steering pump test. If you do not meet these criteria, the poppets should be reset using the procedure outlined in the appropriate steering gear manual. When complete, make sure to recheck the vehicle to ensure it is operating properly. Internal Leakage Test Finally. We will demonstrate how to measure internal leakage on a single gear system. Be sure to follow the lines to make sure that they are hooked up correctly before attempting to perform any tests. Do not keep the load valve closed for longer than 5 seconds at a time. This will prevent excessive heat buildup. Be sure to install the relief valve and valve cap with a new O-ring back into the gear after this test. Install the power steering system analyzer in the pressure line with the load valve fully open. Recheck and adjust the fluid level if required. Install a temperature gauge in the reservoir and begin the test with the fluid temperature between 125 and 135 degrees Fahrenheit. To test the steering gear for internal leakage, you must first prevent the operation of the gear's internal unloading poppet valves or relief valve, or both in some gears. This will allow full pump relief pressure to develop. To prevent operation of the poppets, place an unhardened steel spacer block at least one inch thick and long enough to keep your fingers clear between the axle stop at one wheel. This test can be dangerous if not performed correctly. Keep fingers clear of the axle stops and spacer block during this test. Be sure that the spacer block makes square contact with the axle stop so that the spacer block is not thrown or ejected. 
If the steering gear is equipped with a relief valve, remove the relief valve cap, O-ring, and two-piece relief valve from the steering gear valve housing. Install the relief valve plug, tool number J37130, in its place to prevent operation of the steering gear relief valve. Turn the steering wheel until the axle stop meets the spacer block. Apply 20 pounds of force to the rim of the steering wheel during this test to be sure that the steering gear control valve is fully closed. The pressure gauge should now read pump relief pressure. Record any flow seen on the flow meter as steering gear internal leakage. Repeat this test for the opposite direction of steer. If internal leakage is greater than one gallon per minute and there is no auxiliary hydraulic linear or rotary cylinder in the system, repair or replace the steering gear. After internal leak test is complete, be sure to replace tool number J37130 with relief valve and return to service.